Frank Sesno from PlanetForward.org coming to you from the George Washington uh, University and talking with Eben Baer. He is founder of a company called uh, Ecovative Design. It was founded in 2007 and it's already making a difference. And Eben, I'm so glad you could join us today on this program. Hey, I'm thrilled to be here. Let me start by asking you, uh, what is Ecovative Design? What is the company? Uh, Ecovative Design is a biomaterials company. Now, we're based in upstate New York mm -hmm. and our vision is to replace unsustainable synthetics like styrofoam uh, with natural alternatives. To, to replace? I mean, like no more synthetics, no more styrofoam? Yeah, our vision is to get rid of uh, synthetics whenever they're used in kind of stupid consumer disposable applications. And we've got an interesting twist to doing that. We're actually growing materials. All right, well, we'll get to the growing materials in a minute. But before we do, let's define the problem. Um, you say these are stupid consumer materials. Uh, how stupid do you think they are, and how serious is the problem in your view? Well, I think it's an incredibly serious problem, and it, and it gets to why the materials are stupid. And there, there's sort of three reasons why we think it's, it's crazy to use fossil fuel-based plastics for disposables. Uh, the first is what you make them from, a finite resource like petroleum. The second is how you make them in a really high-energy process. And the third one, which gets to the crux of the problem, is what do you do when you're done with this material like packaging that, that's used for 30 days? The stuff literally the last 10,000 years. You throw it out or you recycle it, which causes more energy to be used to make it again. Yeah, and I, in consumer applications, these products are practically unrecyclable because you have an aggregation challenge. So 99% of it ends up in a landfill. Um, and here you're using a product that lasts 10,000 years for an application, say it's a coffee cup that's used for hours. You know, it's, it's crazy. So Evan, uh, I, here's what I say to my students sometimes when we're talking about these things. Give me a number, quantify this for me. Well, expanded polystyrene, uh, styrofoam, there's $20 billion of this material produced each year worldwide, and it's everywhere, it's ubiquitous. Coffee cups, paper, insulation, packaging. And the EPA estimates that by volume, uh, over 35% of our landfills are actually clogged with this material. So it is not an insignificant problem. To give you a sense of the, the energy content, a cubic foot of styrofoam that you, you'd find around, say, a large television, has the energy equivalent of about a quart of gasoline. Uh, so every time you take that big block of styrofoam that came in the mail and you put it in your trash, you know, just imagine you're, you're slowly pouring a quart of gas into the tr trash. Uh, the energy content is huge. So you're doing what about it? You say you're growing the solution? Uh, and you're, some call you the mushroom man, but I, I, I assume they're referring to legal mushrooms, so go ahead. So we've taken a unique approach uh, that sort of relates to what we see the three issues with these plastics are. Uh, the first is we, we're actually growing a product from agricultural byproducts uh, that are regional. So we have many different feed stocks, seed husks like rice husks or buckwheat husks or cotton husks. So we collect these regionally. Then, rather than using a conventional industrial process where you might grind and and, and glue these things together with a synthetic resin. Uh, we actually use a growing organism, which is uh, based on a mushroom, which is why we're known as the, the mushroom guys here. Uh, we're using a part of the mushroom you've probably never seen. Uh, its root structure, or mycelium, which is essentially these tiny fibers. Basically, we use the mushroom as a glue. We take these seed husks, we put the mushroom tissue on it, and we grow it into a shape. What you get is something that performs a lot like styrofoam, looks a lot like styrofoam, but is made with a fraction of the energy. And the best part is there's no waste in this process you can put it in your garden when you're done with okay, it uh, so Evan let me let me press you on some of this and and, and, and define it a little bit more uh, you still got to grow it you still got to make it you still got to move it so how much energy are you really saving our target is to produce materials with one tenth to one fifth of the embodied energy of an equivalent piece of foam what about the agricultural waste in this process so we use a wide range of agricultural waste things like seed husks uh, these are things that humans can't eat we're not using starches um, and they're things that typically uh, there isn't a good use for. You can't even usually feed them to animals. But they're aggregated because they come to the mill to get the seeds removed. So there's already a supply chain in place, but no one's really using it right now. Are you able to do this in a super energy efficient way? We are. Uh, we, right now we have two big energy consumers in our plant. Uh, we cook and clean the material to get any seeds out of it. Uh, we use energy there, and then we dry the material. Uh, but those are only two times in our plant we use energy, and we actually have done an analysis in SEMA Pro to guide the next versions of our plant. And we're currently producing at scale, uh, so we're doing about five to thousand parts of packaging material a month here. Um, and we're very serious about the energy efficiency side of things. Uh, we have funding from the National Science Foundation to use plant oils to disinfect our material. So that would actually get rid of the steam process. 
So we think we're already at a fifth of the energy content day. Um, if we can take our steam process out or shorten the steam process, you know, that's how we get to our, our long-term target. Okay, so Evan, I want to talk about some of your products here. You have something called Eco Cradle. What's that? Eco Cradle is our answer to polystyrene when used in protective packaging. It's essentially our material molded into a shape with superior impact absorbing ability. This is an example of an Eco Cradle corner block, and you'd use it just like you would a foam corner block. It's, it's durable, it's strong, uh, but it's made with a fraction of the energy. Can you break that for me? Uh, it's gonna be, this one's actually a pretty tough one. <laughs> we, we target heavy items for packaging. So this is designed to hold up a 400 pound table uh, for steel case. Uh, so these are, these are very tough. And that's one of the reasons it, it's such a better choice than foam because to get this level of toughness with a plastic, you have to put a lot of oil in it. You need a lot of chains there. And what's in that? What, what made that? This is, uh, you can actually see it, there's some oat husks. So this is a regional substrate. We get this within a few hundred miles of our facility here. Uh, it's a waste product, they're called oat screening. It's what's left over when they process the oat. And this is comprised of oat, uh, some cottonseed hulls, and our mushroom tissue. Evan, a lot of ideas like this are great ideas, but when you actually do the dollars and cents on them, being green also means being a little bit more costly. Is this more expensive than the styrofoam? We are the same price as foam. Same price. We believe that's, a, that's essential uh, because that's the only way you get scalability. Are you the same price because you're getting big fat government subsidies or other things? No, it's because we pay uh, a few cents a pound for ag waste rather than a dollar a pound for plastic. All right, then you have something called green salate. What's green salate? Green salate is uh, essentially our rigid board insulation, which replaces the foam that's used in building construction. It's got great mold resistance, it's got good thermal properties, and it comes in big flat sheets and uh, it's pretty fire resistant as I understand. Is that your claim? That's true, that's true. An, an, an interesting upside we discovered of using these seed husks is they are nature's packaging and most of them are very fire resistant. So you can put a blowtorch on our insulators. So let me see if I got this right. What you're basically doing is you're, is you're putting your arms around um, agricultural waste, taking this stuff and gluing it together with the stuff that you grow from mushrooms to create all this packaging and insulation. And you say you're doing that at one-tenth or so the energy uh, that it takes to create the commercial styrofoam and polystyrene that's out there now? That's right. Evan, you've been out of school for all of three years now. Where did this idea come from? How have you accomplished so much so quickly? The idea actually developed in a class I took in school at college at Rensselaer. Uh, Gavin and I got this company off the ground literally thousand dollars from a competition we won called why not change the world um, and we've sort of built it along there and it's really been the advice of people all along pushing us uh, and telling you that you know you can have an impact and you, you really have to take jumps if you're going to be successful so don't do the safe thing do the scary thing <laughs> okay Evan Bear thanks a lot really appreciate uh, talking to you here it's uh, been uh, inspiration hearing about the innovation hey great to talk to you too thanks so we've been talking to Evan Baer. He founded Ecovative Design uh, back in 2007. Uh, inspire some thoughts on your part, innovations that you'd like to pursue, business ideas you've got, things you are actually already trying that you'd like the rest of us to know about. Tell us what you're doing. Tell us what your thoughts are at planetforward.org.